Okay, sorry about that. Um, I'm back uh, saying hello again for the second time. I accidentally um, touched the finish button when I was moving my little tripod. So apologies. Hi, Denise, if you want to come back. I'm back over here now. Um, I'm actually just going to turn this so I can get working today. Um, it, it Working and, and talking is wonderful. Um, however, I realize I'm not making any progress and then I go home and I'm thinking about the painting and so what I'd like to do, hi there, so what I'd like to do is actually just keep working and talking so every once in a while I'll turn back to my phone and I'll just read the comments and check back. You guys have been awesome at giving me questions and, and communicating with one another um, throughout these this past week. So keep up the good work. Make sure you share with everyone what it is is you're working on and um, yeah so I don't really even know if I have a topic today but we'll end up maybe that'll unfold as the day goes I just really feel like I want to get into this painting um, I did go home yesterday with a feeling of wow this is really messy but that's okay because um, I'm sure you've all heard the saying that things are gonna look a lot worse before they look at hi Allison thank you um, I think you've all heard that 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 saying that things look a lot better before they get a lot worse and when I went home yesterday I thought oh my gosh I can't believe I left this painting in this state for all the world to see and then I had to really bring myself back to reality I'm like how many people are actually seeing um, your painting in this horrible state and is it that embarrassing and so the answer is actually no it's not that embarrassing because the reality is every single piece of art um, whether it be an actual physical tangible painting or a song or a poem or whatever it is it's going to go through a phase where it's a little rough around the edges so this painting has a lot going on and yes it's certainly rough around the edges but that's okay so if you have any questions for me i will look back at the phone every once in a while but for today i'm mostly i'm just going to be like kind of narrating i suppose what it is i'm doing um so when I looked back, I have to get some paper towel. Um, when I looked back on this painting, it occurred to me that, I don't know how many paper towel. Huh, that might pose a problem for me. I'm gonna unclip, I'll be right back guys. I have to go get some paper towel because I'm kind of useless without it. One sec. Okay, in a perfect world, everything would be right in front of us all the time whenever we needed it, but that's just not today. So anyway, for those of you who are joining me on the weekend, welcome. Um, I don't believe that creativity takes a real break, nor does it have days of the week assigned to it. So I'm just going to start painting. I just think that that's um, necessary. Um, <coughs> turn that a little bit so I want to talk to you about inspiration maybe that's a good topic for the day so hi Maria um, so inspiration where does your inspiration come from I'm going to show you one of my best tricks for I'm going to turn the camera around. best tricks for um, for inspiration so generally when I'm all fired up to paint it's no problem for me to just like dive right into um, to painting and then following my intuition and all that stuff but before I paint before I paint if I'm feeling I don't know maybe maybe I don't know what's next maybe I'm I'm afraid of making a mistake maybe I'm thinking I'm just gonna do a whole bunch of steps that won't count um, hi Yvonne. Maybe I'm afraid of, of doing things in a different way. So what I'm going to do is show you how I get a lot of my inspiration. I have a board on my Pinterest marked art 
it's of course going to freeze right now um, but what I do with that is I just pin things that I find beautiful and sometimes they're art sometimes they're actually not sometimes they're I don't know a studio sometimes it's it's just something that I find really gorgeous but generally what I'm looking at and I'm looking for in my Pinterest boards is um, color and mood how it makes me feel that sort of thing so I actually know when I'm going to paint that I'd like to be surrounded by things that I find gorgeous so it's like when you look at my boards right it's not like I paint lemons or I paint tomatoes in full um, full detail with acrylics or anything like that I actually don't but what I'm looking at when I'm looking at this board for inspiration is just right in this moment what is striking me as beautiful and what is striking me as interesting and what how do I feel hi Denise sorry I hung up on you earlier <laughs> hi Amanda and um, yeah so that's what I do I go to my Pinterest boards and I just scroll through and I just get inspired by all things that I find beautiful and maybe it's a mood maybe it's a feel maybe it's you know when you look at something like this you feel like like I'm just gonna go on this one I'm not sure what is going on with my Pinterest today but anyway maybe it's because I've got two things going on at the same time I don't know I've given up on doing the split screen thing so now I'm just gonna have my iPad running and my iPhone running and we'll just talk and we'll just um, hi Karen and oh I don't know right right anyway okay let's ignore Pinterest for now what I want to tell you that um, so when I'm looking for inspiration I often go to um, a place like Pinterest because I'm able to collectively keep all my favorite things in one spot and things that um, things that inspire me all in one place and then I'm going to turn that around put that back over here yeah I'm able to put everything in one place and then that way I can gain inspiration from um, from the, the the mood or the feeling of the day so when I came in today and I saw this painting that I'd been working on sure it's got lots of layers and it's got lots of darkness but it's also got a vibe right oh thank you so much Thanks, Jan. Um, it's got such a, a, a feeling of sadness, right? Like all these drips and this gray and this, like it reminds you of a rainy day when you're stuck in the house. So to me, I'm obviously not going for that, that vibe today. So when I look at, hi Michaela. So when I'm looking at art on my Pinterest, there we go, we're back. So I can show you this. So when I'm looking at art on my Pinterest, I'm looking at vibe and mood that's resonating with me that day. So when I see something and I'm like, oh, that's, I don't know if my Pinterest is going to work today, but if not, there's something odd, odd, odd about Pinterest for me today. Um, <laughs> maybe it doesn't allow sharing I don't know how this works but anyway in my Pinterest boards I'm going for mood and feel rather than actual like I'm gonna make that painting today um, so once I find out the mood the feel maybe the color vibe that speaks to me that day maybe that day I see a light blue like I've never in a painting that I've never seen a light blue in a painting before and and that blue makes me feel a certain way that day and I go that's what this painting needs it's the blue so um, when I came in, I told you that I felt this painting feels really sad and heavy right now. And even though it's got a lot of, hi Cassandra, even though it's got a lot of beautiful um, little elements and details for me to work off of, the mood was wrong and the feeling was heavy. And so I'm gonna change that today with paint because to me, paint and whimsy are like the fastest ways for me to kill a bad vibe. Um, so in any discipline right in life whenever we've got a, a thing going on that doesn't feel right we have to sort of identify yeah that feels yucky that's a bad feeling that's a bad whatever and then we have to um, adjust it and attempt to 
to change it. So I'm going to start adding some colors. I think that might help me tame the mood a little bit. And it's not like saying I'm going to turn this whole thing into hot pink all of a sudden and bubble gum. That's not the point of this. The point of this for me is that I need to adjust the temperature of the painting um, so that it feels a little warmer in here. Right now it just feels a little sad. Um, I love that you guys are greeting each other and, 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 uh, hey Karen. And I love that everyone is responding to these videos, um, in such a positive way. And I hope that you do find your own, um, way back to creativity during this self-isolation period. I'm finding a lot of my friends are telling me that they're still working. They're still like setting up their laptops at home and working their jobs and, so nine to four is kind of like they're still their day to day. And um, it's funny how we, we tend to think that everyone is in the exact same boat as us. And I just thought that the world was just kind of pressing pause and sitting at home looking for things to do, which is why I kind of started this open studio meant to give people um, something to look forward to every day in terms of of finding your way back to creativity, whether that be a painting or whether that be needlepoint or, or poetry writing or whatever it is for you, um, it's not necessarily going to be the same thing for everybody. Actually, it won't be the same thing for everybody. So let me see if I can get... I'm still trying to illustrate a point to you guys on Pinterest, but I really can't get it to cooperate. So it, it's somewhat funny to me. Um, technology is just really, really funny to me. I guess I'm not supposed to do that right now. Anyway, um, so this painting I told you, the mood feels really heavy. I need to change that. I'm gonna need to lighten this painting up a lot. And that's okay. I have my scratch marks. I'm gonna follow my scratch marks. See if that takes me somewhere that feels better than the sadness and darkness I have going on in this painting. It's not that I'm sad, but I'm just, you know, I feel the painting feels sad. And I have to decide if that's the message I want to convey. And today, I'm not feeling like I want to convey any um, sadness. If you are a painter or a drawer, or a drawer, nice word. Um, if you are into creating physical art, um, as opposed to you know, writing poetry or songwriting or something like that. I find that whatever it is we make or whatever it is we, we, um, we produce or we choose to make, maybe you've got a pattern if, you're, if you sew or you knit or something like that, but whatever it is you decide, yes, this is what I'm going to make, this is what I'm going to do, I find that there's a, a great degree of... Um, of truth in what it is we make. So now is it just me or when you are doing something entirely intuitively and serendipitously and, and um, from, from a place of instinct, is it just me or do you find that your artwork can reveal things to you? So for me, what I mean by that is my paintings will actually often give me the title while I'm working on them. And what that means is when I'm listening to my little guides and my little um, intuitive nudges, I actually feel like I can hear the name of the painting being, being spoken. And yeah, boo-hoo, call it whatever you want. It's just... I sort of get a, an insight as to what the painting is about, even if I don't know what the painting is about yet. I know this may sound like a whole lot of, what is she talking about? But um, I do have that 
that recognition in my hands. And this painting, like I said, it carried with it a mood and a feel that wasn't wasn't really jiving with the mood or the feeling that this open studio has been providing me with anyway. So I love that the sense of community is really starting to take shape in this world. You see all kinds of acts of um, support and love between friends and neighbors and family and people reaching out to each other, strangers, that sort of thing. There's still a lot of the old in us, but there's also still, there's a lot of new stuff happening right now. And I find that really interesting. Um, okay, gotta get my brushes going here. I'm trying to create a color that fits Fits the, the, oh, well, it's not terrible. Maybe it could use a bit of brown. Fits the mood of this painting, I guess. So, um, like I said, I found it very dark. I found it was not at all um, conducive to, to making me feel great about this painting. So I know I need to adjust the colors. So, that's okay, I'll adjust the colors and we'll see what happens. Like I said, today's video, it's a Saturday. So I'm not feeling entirely like I'm working today for some reason, maybe because it is a Saturday. I feel like I'm more just opening up my studio to you and you're just watching me paint and ramble on. I hope if you are watching this that you're listening to music or doing whatever it is in your studio that gives you um, that gives you inspiration or that gives you a sense of um, peace when you're working. I know myself, I love to listen to music, but when you're doing a Facebook Live for proprietary reasons, you're not allowed to play music. Um, so that being said, I'm sure you don't want to hear me sing. I especially don't want to hear myself sing. There we go. So have you guys shared in the comments what it is you're working on? If you haven't, I encourage you to do so. This group has been extremely supportive and creative towards one another. And looking back at the comments the next day, I have been absolutely amazed at the connections that have been made. Um, I even had somebody joining in yesterday and saying hello that she was in a workshop that I was in like ages ago in Oregon. So miles and miles and miles and miles and miles away um, we connected at a workshop once upon a time I don't even know if I was teaching she didn't even mention that but I'm not even sure I was teaching at that workshop and um, then she stumbled across the videos so um, I think it's awesome when connections are being made people are meeting each other People are learning from each other, so do share. Don't be shy and, and share in the comments who you are, what you're working on, how you fill your creative boots. And if you are, because I know Amanda, Amanda is one of my uh, friends and studio mates. Um, we have a shared studio, or not a shared studio, uh, uh, a studio. A big studio space with eight resident artists in their own individual spaces and so like a collective and Amanda is one of the um, collective that we run into each other all the time because we have very similar schedules here in the studio 
and she was telling me that she's going to start um, going either live or teaching video as well and it's a big step for people to go live to press you know to press record um, we don't often know what to talk about we don't know how we're going to perform we don't know anything um, and I think that this time is very interesting that it's bringing up for many of us the need to connect and the need to um, find solidarity in all kinds of things. So um, Amanda and I are following, finding that an interesting thing is happening right now with, um, with artists is that artists are starting to go live. Artists are starting to record videos. Artists are starting to teach online. And part of me thinks at the beginning, I was like, yeah, but is it worth the effort? Because then afterwards everything, you know, will, will go back to normal. But then I started to think like, why, it's not why does it have to, but it's like, why can't we use this time to learn new skills, to learn new um, techniques, to uh, welcome in new opportunities and that um, including video and things like that might be part of your, your new norm. So um, one of the days we were doing video and you guys, for the ones who are here and the ones who uh, remember, um, sorry that I'll be repeating myself, but just carry on with whatever it is you're doing. And for anyone who uh, wasn't here for that, what we were talking about was one day we had a, a, a topic of starting things differently. And that's like, it was just a challenge to find one thing that you are, are find yourself always doing in your creative practice and then do it differently, start it differently. So if you paint or you draw or whatever it is you do, you journal, you must have a, sort of a ritual whether you recognize it or not, that you constantly follow. And what I was challenging people to do is to challenge the way they start things and... <laughs> Thanks, Bodhi. So my sister says that I make everything look so easy, she'd be making a huge mess, it would all be one color. That actually happens often to a lot of people um, when they're painting. And that's why when you do a lot of artwork I tell people to walk away from the paintings often because what happens is we do tend to overwork things and make them look really muddy so the the uh, practice for me in learning when to stand back and learning when to let things dry and learning when to uh, walk away from a painting that has good potential and that that is from years of experience um, and so when I am teaching, actually, that's one of the things I often tell people. I'm like, you know, you should have two or three paintings on the go all the time for that moment when, when you're working on something and all of a sudden you realize, oh, I've made a mistake or I've turned that into mud or whatever. So that's a really good time to recognize um, when you've got something go good going on. You're like, this is really exciting and this is really fun, but I should probably walk away. So a walk away doesn't mean abandon the painting. Walk away means doing the kindest thing possible for that painting by allowing it to dry so that you can continue to work. So that's the, that's the um, acrylic painter's um, curse kind of thing is that because it does dry relatively quickly, we tend to think that we can just keep working and working and working and finish something in one day. But the kindest thing you can do for that painting is actually allow it to dry. So... Um, but I thank you for the compliment that I make it look easy because um, this is what I do, right? This is how I paint. This is um, this is how I produce my art. I don't plan it all out, and it's very intuitive. So I put something down that I don't like. I try to remove it. So these color bands that I put on, I find really interesting because all I'm doing by by removing them a little bit with the baby wipes is it's just put a nice stain on the painting and the lines
came from earlier line carving into, or yesterday's line carving into the painting. So I still don't know or the story of this painting hasn't been revealed to me because that's the way I work. I put some color down, I put some paint down, and then I make these, these little abstract worlds. And then suddenly, um, I feel almost guided, if you will, to um, add an image. And it's usually that image that tells me what this painting is about. So, um, I mentioned earlier, whoops, that's cool. I mentioned earlier that um, sometimes early on in a painting, and sometimes later in the painting, but sometimes early on in the painting, the name of the painting um, reveals itself. And yesterday, it was funny because when I was driving home, I guess I must have been thinking about this painting and the title of the painting came to me and I'm not going to reveal it yet because I still don't understand how this is all coming together, but it, it was really cool to me to get a title because now I have like a hint at where I'm going. And if I were to be truthful, the reason I think I got that hint was so that I could keep going because I was feeling very... Um, unsure about this painting and that's a really hard thing to describe when I say I feel unsure about a painting because it's not like the painting is um, you know it is it, it can't be undone right like put a coat of gesso on this and and it's no longer a problem in my life so that wasn't where I was going with um, with having this this uh, painting sort of looming over me as a, as a problem. But I, I too, I hit the same roadblocks that all of you hit. And, and that I think is probably one of the, the one things that I always like to reveal to my students is that we are of the same. Um, I have no greater advantage at you know lessons or training or anything than you have I haven't taken more courses than you I'm not like we're not in any kind of competition here we're on the same level playing field what I probably do have over a lot of you is I have um, I've been practicing that's the best way to put it I have been practicing um, I paint every day I listen to my intuition, I listen to my instincts, I listen to um, my, my creativity. My creativity talks to me so often, it's amazing how many times I ignore it, um, because I actually think that I get so many ideas sometimes that I have to start filtering, and I quite haven't learned which ones to listen to and which ones to ignore. Because now that I've, I've welcomed in the idea that um, my creativity can speak to me and I'll listen. I think I get too many ideas and it's too many ideas for one painting. That's for sure. So I'm, uh, I'm just pulling out a few other tools here because while I'm in the middle of making this, um, this muddy painting, I also want to start bringing some, some light back into it and I don't need to keep everything. So, um, I'm a big supporter of the idea that not every brush stroke you make, not every pencil line, not every word you write is a masterpiece. Um, I'm sorry to say that, but I actually don't believe that that's true. I believe that at some point we have to get into our, I'm going to use paintings as a reference because that's my only frame of reference right now. I believe we actually need to get in there and do some editing. So, um, yeah, so I need to do a bit of editing in this painting, and I believe that um, a lot of times we need to do a bit of editing when it comes to um, our own creativity and that sort of thing. So, 
Let me warm this thing up because it's still feeling really dark, really heavy. So, I'm actually, I'm not really, not really feeling the paint entirely right now. So maybe what I need to do is add some more collage. So what I say by we're at the same place is that I practice a lot more than you in my painting, but I also make the same number of mistakes. I make the same number of back and forth um, movements. I make the same number of questioning. Does that look good? Does that look bad? Um, we talked the other day about where we get our, um, our cues from and I was cautioning people about asking people for their advice if we're not really looking for it. So if I'm desperately looking for some clue as to what this painting might be, um, I'll tell you one thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to um, start eliciting advice or questions or entertaining the notion of suggestions from um, friends or from social media or from my husband even for that matter because they're not a they're not um, they may be artists but even if they're not artists they they have your best interests at heart and they want you to um, make work that you like and that other people like and they want you to be proud of yourself and they want all these wonderful things for you but the one thing they can't do for you is um, get in your head and listen to your creativity for you and tell you what your paintings are about. So, um, yeah, where you get your, your advice and your help from is going to be really um, a touchy subject matter for a lot of you. destroy this painting, the better I feel about it. And when I say destroy, it's not even that. It's just carving back to, to what was there before. I got some really great stuff going on in the background of this painting. And it's only because I started this a different way, right? So for those of you who remember, I started this painting with collage as opposed to um, a bit of strategic painting and line carving and stuff like that. So even though I have my line carving in here, um, I started this so differently and the lines never really seemed evident to me as to what was going on. And you know what? I feel like I just want to do something very different. So I'm going to just keep turning this until I see. Maybe this painting needs a different direction. Yeah, that's good. That is good. All right, so, um, so this painting's starting to talk to me a little bit. Um, what that means for me is I turned it because I had this little instinct. Maybe you're just looking at it from the wrong perspective. Maybe you haven't loved it yet because you haven't really seen it yet. So let's see what that means. I'm going to try and do this editing that I was telling you about earlier. So when I paint, I often edit. And what that means is I'm not afraid to lose anything that was underneath. Um, I believe that every line, every scratch, every piece of paper will contribute in the way it's meant to contribute and if that means that it gets covered up and it's no longer visible then that's what that means there's nothing wrong with that so this is feeling so much better like you can't even imagine like to me i don't know how it looks to a viewer but to me it's taking on a new energy it's the same painting I flipped it upside, well, no, I turned it um, 45 degrees. And I'm adding a bit of paint 
and following the lines that were there. And the lines are only there because I just scratched a whole bunch of lines in there, but I also had lines in there previously. And in some areas, I'm gonna drag some lighter paint over it. That's just an instinct. In some areas, I may actually just not even put any paint because I like the color. I don't know, but to me, this is taking on a whole new feel. Like I'm actually like buzzing with excitement to see what this painting is going to reveal. And if I could bottle that and tell you how to get to that place in your art, I tell you, I would be the queen of art. Um, because I would be able to help you harness that and tap into that thing. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that. How did I get here? How did I get to this point where I guess I was allowing myself to feel what was happening in the painting. So I was feeling like, oh my gosh, you are live. People are watching you. People expect you to pull out a painting out of your back pocket. Um, and I was feeling a little bit of apprehension because I'm like, wow, normally I'm better than this. Normally my paintings aren't this hard to come by. Normally my paintings talk to me. And I'm wondering if, because this is a new territory for me, talking at the same time as painting, um, I, so at the same time I'm sharing what's going on in my head. This is not really a tutorial, but I'm, I'm trying to reflect and honor what it is that um, is happening for me so that maybe I could help you tap into that yourself. So what it is we're going for is that feeling where you feel all the emotions of the painting. So I was feeling the emotions of this painting. I was feeling the emotions of the scenario. I was, I was second guessing myself, I guess. I was thinking, not, not about the painting. I was second guessing myself about maybe I shouldn't be broadcasting on the weekend. Maybe no one's even listening. Maybe, you know, everyone didn't want to take the weekend off. I don't know what I was thinking, but I had all these like weird thoughts about broadcasting today come up. And I was feeling that through this painting. I'm like, oh, it's ugly, it's dark, it's this, it's that. And in feeling those feelings and allowing that to actually sit with me while I was painting live, it occurred to me that the emotions were, were like a, a gateway. They were allowing other things to come in. And so, at that moment, I just went, okay, what, 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 right? Like as if I was being nagged or annoyed by something. And that thing that I was being nagged and annoyed by was actually, I think one of my creative muses, I don't know what else other word to use for that, but I think it was a creative muse saying, would you just listen, turn the painting? All I had to do was turn it. And then those lines that I just carved in there moments before, suddenly looked to me like like a map, like directions, like a guideline. And I thought, oh, okay, so what if I follow the lines in a different path? Because in that weird circle thing that was happening, I felt like I was spiraling, right? Like I just kept painting in a circle and I'm like, oh, something's gotta happen here soon because this painting is not feeling all that exciting to me. And lo and behold, there is a painting in here somewhere. And now I'm actually excited to discover what that is. So like I told you earlier, I was, I was a bit afraid to share with you that the, the title has already been given to me and I still a little bit am because maybe I feel like that's part of the reveal at the end, right? So I already know the title and that was like quite clear. Like it was just like this little, it's almost like somebody called me yesterday on the way home and said, oh, by the way, that painting is called this. And so at first I was like, oh, okay, but I still didn't feel like I had a, um, any insight as to how that, that was going to reveal itself. So now I'm feeling like, I'm feeling hopeful. How are you guys feeling in your work? Tell me that. Are you feeling hopeful? Are you feeling that, um, 
you might be able to access that part of you that tells you what to do next. I'd like to explore this a little more because I'm, I'm feeling like this is something that we all want to know, right? And this, I hear this all the time. People say to me, I just want to get closer to my art. I want my art to start speaking to me. I want my art to reveal things to me. I want my art to tell me what's next. Um, I'm feeling stuck. I'm feeling this. I'm feeling that, right? So um, I'm sure many of you can relate to that because this happens so often for so many of us. Okay, I did a little tutorial on drips the other day, and so this one is one that I actually didn't really cover. So anyone who is looking at this now, who uh, Maria was there, Maria was watching. Um, hi guys. For, uh, Maria was watching this earlier and asking me about drips. So this is a water drip, and I call this um, like a, a corrosive method. So basically all I did was water down um, some of the paint that I was working on. So it's like 95% water or something like that. And I just dripped it through paint that was dry to the touch, but it actually isn't cured yet. And I'm going to show you a little magic here. What happens is that water, as I say, it's pretty corrosive to that paint that's in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the water using my paper towel. And you'll see that the water has actually just created, whoops, created some streaks in my painting. And so they're subtle drips. They're subtle drips, which is feeling really good in this painting so far. I'm excited to get to the top part. I know that sounds a bit crazy, but yeah, I'm actually excited to get to the top part. So what has happened is this bit of a a horizon, crazy little horizon, has been formed, and now we have this sky, if you will. So yeah, I want to get to the top part, because that's, that's getting me excited here. Let me pull out some color. Okay, so a little tip for those of you who are painting and who know my, uh, hi Maria. Um, hi Tracy, I hope you're still creating. Um, yeah, so the, the thing that that people are often asking me about, um, if, for anyone who knows my Two Worlds Collide program, there is a page, like page 14 or 15 or something like that, where I talk about using um, acrylics to tint your chalk paint and to make a stain. So I'm going to show you that right now um, for anyone who is into my Two Worlds Collide program, which is the stable combination. Of, um, of mixed media materials with encaustic wax. So um, I'm gonna use mostly water and then these, um, uh, Golden's my favorite, Golden Fluids. Um, and I say fluids because they're very, very liquid. But the reason that I use these a lot is because they, um, they have, they're so concentrated in pigment that I can turn them into a watercolor and when I turn them into a watercolor, I'm depositing the color, but I'm actually not even depositing enough of the acrylic or it's been so thinned out and dispersed that it doesn't repel any wax. So it doesn't change the properties of your chalk painted background. Um, so you can use it to tint your chalk paints as well, um, which is also really great, but I'm using it full strength like a stain. So I think I need a bigger brush for what I want to do now. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to dip my brush in water because I really need um, this to be mostly water as opposed to um, paint, right? So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to give that a little bit of a color wash. I hate green. Um, that's a, a weird statement, right? Eh? It's not that I hate green. I just, for me, I, I, I hate the, it's 
time I hate green. I love grass, I love green, right? I, I don't like it in my paintings just because to me I don't like the, the, the mood or the feeling that it creates in my work. It has nothing to do with your work, has nothing to do with me being a nature hater or anything like that. It's just in my own work, it doesn't, it doesn't work. So I'm going to tone it down and tone it out so that I'm not just feeling all this green. Might add a different blue. Yeah, so this is a Prussian blue, so that, that feels better already um, on my brush. I'm going to use lots of water. And I'm actually going to pick up some black and I'm going to pick up some brown. And I'm picking them up in chalk paint just because I'm just going to be diluting a little bit. Ah, it's a much better color for me. Not too brown. It's not too black. It's not too blue. It's just right. So again, more baby wipes for me because I'm just staining, right? All these layers really lend themselves to, to um, stain, right? You can see how I can unify an area without burying it under all my paint. So there's so much detail and, and um, texture up in the top that without all these layers, they just wouldn't be there, right? And so that's interesting, interesting. Okay, so a little more water, a little more paint. I'm gonna keep staining. Keep splattering. Anyone who's a perfectionist is probably having a little heart attack watching this happen, but drips and marks and whatever, they're all okay with me. Because like I said, every little thing will contribute to the overall look. I'm not worried about that. It was fun because one of my uh, comments yesterday was from an artist friend of mine who said, you look like you're having fun when I was doing these videos. And I actually kind of chuckled when I saw that because I thought it looks like I'm having fun. Um, I guess he couldn't see my stress when this painting wasn't actually doing anything for me. And here I am trying to talk to you very liberally about um, creating and just letting your muse talk to you and yesterday this painting was going Ugh. it was really not sitting very well with me at all and so um, today uh, Mark I am having fun thank you <laughs> do I still use spray paints I use spray paint all the time um, so I can't do a lot of spray painting indoors obviously it's really um, an outdoor thing so I use a lot of spray paint in the in the months when I can take my paintings outside um, and I spray paint at different stages so if I feel like I need to put um, there we go like a character or a mark or something over my my uh, painting that requires spray paint then I usually do that at the end right but if I'm doing something that is less um, less top like it's less finishing um, then what I'll do is I'll take it out early and I'll do some spray painting and that sort of thing and then um, the best part is is that when I'm if I am using spray paint early on in the painting um, because of the properties of the spray paint the paint doesn't actually my other paints um, don't actually stick to it all that well so sometimes they'll bubble up and they'll repel and do funny things and then you'll get a really interesting or I'll get a really interesting burst of color that comes through that. Um, so yeah, I use spray paint all the time, but in different, uh, at different levels of the painting. 
and that creates different looks for me as well. So I saw this little piece of paper that was like bubbling up and so I just scratched it off and then it revealed the back side which is like super pretty. I don't even know what it is but I'm just going to put it over here. It was just the back side of the paper and I don't know it just looked really nice so I just wanted to flip it over and glue it back in. We talked the other day about floor junk being just the right thing um, and often when I am painting I just look on the floor and it seems to me like the most perfect things have been missed by the broom. Ha! I'm kidding. As if, I, as if I'm sitting here sweeping. Um, uh, yeah, no, nobody's sweeping. This is just floor junk that is allowed to be front and center in my paintings because it hasn't been cleaned up yet. So, um... These little bits are like little treasures to me. And I, I actually am not really sure why, but sometimes you find the best little bits and pieces just lying on your floor surface. And it's only because you've scratched them off previously. And now they're just the right addition. So I think this painting is almost ready for subject matter. Um, it definitely has a very landscape feel to it. Um, how I choose my subject matter um, is really, again, it's very intuitive. So I don't have anything in mind for this one right now. Thank you, everybody. That's very sweet. Um, I don't have anything in mind for this right now. It's still a little green for me up here. Actually, here's another little tip on how I knock out the green is I add some of my my big vat of goo, right, that I made, which is just water and um, cleaning paint brushes and a bit of walnut ink and yeah, so it's, there's tea bags in here, there's sometimes there's leftover coffee. It's just kind of a, I don't know, it's like a weird browny, watery mixture. That helps me temper and change the tone of um, some of my paintings. So this one was still feeling a little cool. So I'm just adding a bit of warmth to it. There we go, a little warmth going on. Maybe a little down here, a little here. And then of course, baby wipes, remove it. I can't have the whole thing looking like I just dipped it in chocolate milk. Warming this up. There. Just a little warm. It helps take some of those cool areas and just just give them a little warmth here and there. Not a big change, nothing too drastic. I'll wipe off the drips of it. There we go. Now I feel like it could use a bit more um, white. But you know what, we were talking about, let me check the time. Oh my gosh, it's one o'clock already. Let me flip this around so that you guys can see my um, my workspace, uh, wrong way, sorry. Where are you, Heather? So Heather just said she had to scrape snow and ice off her car this morning to go grocery shopping. Was that Heather or was that Jan? I can't tell. And where do you guys live? That's wild. Um, Today the sun was out. I was really thrilled because um, it's been raining the last few days and bleh. anyway, super happy. Okay, I'm going to turn this around now. There we go. Okay, so what I did earlier was I just piled a whole bunch of papers on the table because I thought when I was working I would just grab some things and 
I don't know that anything in here is going to speak to me. Um, how about a big goose, right? I don't know if anything in here is going to speak to me on this painting. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to open up my drawers. So if you see, I've got all these, these massive drawers and in it, I have tons and tons of papers. So minus 10 in Calgary right now. Oh, you're in Calgary. That's why. Um, I suppose that's going to be a new reality for me when I move to Jasper, right? I'm laughing because I, uh, I haven't really sprung it on my husband yet that we're going to move to Jasper. Um, minus, oh, plus 11 in Montreal. Yeah, that's more like it. Okay, so yeah, a lot of you can see these big drawers I have, which just have tons and tons of paper in them. And it's just papers I've been saving over the years, images, books, all kinds of stuff. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my papers and then I'm going to have to get quiet in order to do this because there, there's no other way to describe this for me, but it's almost like a knowing. So I'll sit down, I'll go through my drawers, I'll let the pieces that are going to um, speak to me, speak to me. I'll pull them out and I'll put them on the top of the table up here. And then I'll pull them over to the painting and I'll just hold them up one by one. And then tomorrow I should be able to reveal to you um, what the painting is about. Like that's that's fun. Um, what the painting is about, but also what the subject matter is. So um, for those of you who know me, you know that um, I, I use imagery, but it comes later on in my artwork because it kind of reveals the story of what the painting is all about. So when I look at the painting right there, right, minus six in White Horse Yukon, burr, burr. Anyway, so when I look at the um, the painting over there, right, it's got a much warmer feel today. It's got a much more, um, I don't know, ethereal feel to it. I guess that's a great word to use for that. Plus three in the beautiful Okanagan Wine Valley. Jan, I have to tell you, I seriously miss the Okanagan Wine Valley. I had so much fun when I was there, but I felt like it was too short. Everywhere we went when we were on our cross-country trip just seemed too short. Um, and we did that in, in six weeks, five, six weeks, we crossed the country and back. And yeah, we have to do that again, but like take three months or something because you really can't get in the, um, well, especially because I was working, right? When we were in the Okanagan, my husband really had a good time exploring and and uh, enjoying all the restaurants and the wineries and everything. So that's something I really didn't get to take part in. So next time, next time I'm definitely doing that because that was super fun and um, definitely want to do that again. Anyway, so yeah, so tomorrow I'll reveal what this painting is all about. I'm just going to keep, um, <laughs> I would love to move there. Um, it's funny because my husband, you know, with all this going on, we're starting to think, you know, maybe early retirement's not a terrible thing. Um, who knows what the world will bring, right? This, uh, all these changes and, and things we're going through right now. Um, I bet you there's going to be a lot more people taking early retirement though. Um, anyway, so yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through these things, pull out some papers, see what's happening, and um, yeah, tomorrow we'll reveal more of what this painting is all about. In the meantime, your homework, kids, is to make sure you pay attention to when your creative muses speak to you, okay? And like today, I was having this whole little revelation epiphany, for those of you who are watching, um, as we were live, right? Like I was... I was recognizing that I was having all these emotions and these feelings about my painting and recognizing at the same time that all that noise going on in my head was blocking me from being able to hear the little subtle um, direction from my muse, which was just saying, why don't you just um, turn the painting? And it was funny. That's all it took. Anyway, thank you guys for paying attention. And uh, again, here we are in beautiful Hello Studios. I hope you find um, your creative path today. And um, yeah, maybe make sure you carve time out for your creativity. Bye, everybody.